Uh, hello, guys. So you're yeah, welcome to um, this lecture. It's basically um, a continuation of the previous one where we did an example um, and showed that a given set was a vector space. And we had to go through all the um, axioms, right? Um, all the axioms that prove that uh, a given set is a vector space, OK? So here, I'm just continuing with that. Um, it's going to be a short video of um, more typical, some more typical examples of um, vector spaces that you will find. Um, so another example is a set of um, n by n matrices, right, under the usual operations of matrix addition and scalar multiplication, all right? So the set of matrices denoted by this is a vector space, okay? So here you could, um, if you want to satisfy yourself or convince yourself that that is the case, you could just pick a two by two or three by three matrix and go through the axioms as we did, as we did in the previous example um, to show that yes, indeed, it's a vector space because it satisfies um, all the other ones, okay? Uh, so that is uh, one way. Also, I'm going to show later on that, you know, how you show that a given set is not a vector space. That is very critical and important in giving you more insight, right, into what we mean by a vector space. Another typical example is the, um, the set of polynomials. So uh, Pn here, which is a set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, then you could represent, uh, say, two of them, right? If you take P, you could represent it as this polynomial, where the a's here are real numbers, a n, a n minus 1, up to a a, a not. There's a t here, which is missing. Okay, uh, the same way there's a T here. So you have P, you have Q. Um, so here we are showing how you do the um, addition of polynomials, right? So P plus Q will be, I mean, you add the um, similar times, you add this and that and so on. Again, multiply this by T. And then scal scalar multiplication is basically multiply each term by uh, the scalar lambda and you have this. Okay, so with this, um, definition of um, addition and scalar multiplication, you can show that um, the set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n is a vector space. Again, um, I have left out all the details, but you could, you could do that. You could take a quadratic, for instance, and try to prove, go through all the different uh, axioms and show that, yes, indeed, the set of polynomials um, or uh, quadratics is uh, a vector space. Okay, <clears throat> good. So that is, um, these are typical examples that you will often see um, in, um, in books. Um, another familiar one is a set Rn, right? So Rn here with elements x1 to xn, where each of it, this xi is a real number, right? Um, and so once again, as I mentioned before, for a vector space, you want to specify the, um, the way the addition is done, right, with the elements of the set and how you do scalar multiplication. So that is basically what we're doing here. We choose um, an element in Rn, so x1 to xn, we choose another one. And then we show that scalar addition, or sorry, um, addition of vectors, right, of elements uh, of Rn is given by this. So x plus y is given by this. Basically, you do it component-wise, x1 plus y1 give you the first component x2 y2 the second and so on okay so that is addition that is how you perform addition on this set and then scalar multiplication basically take each component and multiply by the scalar so lambda times x1 lambda times x2 all the way to lambda times xn okay so with this definition and scalar modification again you can prove following you know with all the axioms you can show that rn here is a vector space okay so you could you could take the same um rn make n here uh two or three right so you have only three uh, elements here and then go through the axioms if you want to in fact in this case you can you can do it for x1 to xn it's, it's uh, quite straightforward okay so those those are some kind of if you like exercises for you to try okay um, now, this is important. Uh, how do you show that something is not a vector space? As I mentioned before, just look for an example that violates the, uh, one of the axioms, and then you're good to go. 
Okay, so here's one. Let V be um, R n uh, with the usual definition of addition. Okay, so addition is the same as we have here: component-wide addition. But scalar multiplication is given by this. If I take any scalar and multiply by any element in R n, n in this case is two, right? I just have x and y. So x y here is an element in R n. Lambda here is the scalar in your field. <clears throat> So if you multiply any element by the uh, scalar, this is what you get. You get the scalar times x, and then the second com component becomes zero. So this is the definition of scalar multiplication, all right? Now with this definition of scalar multiplication and addition, V here um, is not, okay? It's not a vector space. Well, why is that the case? Now, if you go back, let me uh, quickly go back. If you go back to the definition of a vector space, so actually, let me write it here. Let me um, write it here. I'm sure you remember one of, one of the axioms, right? One of the important axioms is that for a vector space, if I pick an element uh, in the set, okay? If I take one and multiply by the element A, I expect to get A back. Okay, if I don't get A, then it's, it's, um, the set is not a vector space. So here, so here's an example. If I just pick two, three, right? Which is the set Rn or R2, right? If I pick two, three and multiply it by one, okay? According to this definition, right? Lambda here is a constant. So lambda can be one. So if I multiply by one, the result is going to be two times one, which is two. And the third component is going to be zero, okay? But this is not two, three, it's not A. So if two, three was A, I expect that if I multiply it by one, I should get A, but I don't get A, I get two, two, zero, okay? So because it violates this condition here, this set here, with the definition of scalar multiplication here, it's not a vector space, okay? It's not a vector space. So, we use, we use the last axiom, right? The last axiom in the set of axioms to show that this, this guy here is not a vector space. Let's look at um, another one here to show that uh, a set is not a vector space, okay? So here, uh, let V be the set of um, integers, Z, okay? With the usual operations. Um, Z is not a vector space over, remember a vector space is always a space over some field, right? So this is saying Z, the set of integers is not a vector space over a set of real numbers. So in other words, Z over R is not, not a vector space, okay? Why is that? Now here we are going to show that it's not a vector space because uh, it's not closed, Z. Z here is not closed under scalar multiplication. Remember that if lambda, lambda is an element of the field and I take A as an element of the set of integers and I take lambda times A, the result is expected to be in the set, okay? For a vector space, if lambda here, uh, which is a scalar, is in the set R, and A here is an element of the set Z, integer, and I multiply them, the result here has to be in, in Z. So that, that's why we say a vector space is closed under scalar multiplication, okay? Now, if I pick, lambda, the scalar to be one over two in R, and I pick my A, the integer, to be five, for instance, in, uh, in Z, okay? The product, if I multiply them, one over five, one over two times five is five over two, but five over two is not an integer, it's not in Z, okay? So it's not close. Therefore, um, Z here, okay, defined over R is not, it's not a vector a vector space, okay? So it's not a vector space. So that is how you show that. We just use the closure to, to disprove it, 
Okay, and in this case, we use the fact that one times a cross a to just prove that this is not a vector space. So you just need one of the axioms to be um, to be um, uh, not to be satisfied or to be violated, and then you can conclude that it's not a vector space. Remember that, um, and that um, when I did the introduction, I, I gave a simple example of um, a set, right? I'm sure you remember this one. I gave um, a simple example of, uh, oh, this is still here, right? We said that given the set S, which is the, uh, if you like a vector X, Y, where X is greater than zero and Y is greater than zero. Well, we showed that this is not a vector space because, <clears throat> because in this set, this set has no um, identity element, additive identity, there's no zero. All right, zero, zero is not an element of this because X has to be greater than zero and Y is greater than zero. Okay, so you can use the fact that it has no identity element to disprove that the set here, S here is not a vector space. Okay, in fact, even if you use, so let me, um, let me do this. Even if you uh, change this and you add, say, suppose, so I'll just clear it and then write in a new one. <clears throat> so suppose that we even defined uh, in another the set similar to the first one. Okay, again x y such that x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero, x and y are real. Okay, I could have put that in there. Uh, are real? Okay. Suppose, so in this case, I still have, uh, now I have zero, so I can't use the zero to disprove. Now, this is the set that is all of this, right? The elements from the set are coming from here, still in the first quadrant, including zero, right? This includes zero now. But it's still not a vector space. Why? Well, um, if I pick, let's say, uh, two, two, or two, three, right? The element, pick an element A, which is two, three, okay? Two, three belongs, is an S, okay? Now, if I pick, um, to get, to get, uh, for every element, you need the additive inverse, right? To be present, such that if I take A, and add it to its additive inverse. Let's call it some V, okay? And add it to the additive inverse V. This has to be equal to the zero, all right? Okay, from here, that means that the additive inverse V should be what? The vector, this goes there, so negative two and negative what? Three. So if I pick the vector two, three, which is obviously in the first quadrant, the additive inverse of two, three is negative two, negative three, but negative two, negative three is here. It's not in this set. Apart from that, negative two, three here is not an element of the set S because in S here, every element, the X must be positive and the Y must also be positive. But here is the case, they are negatives, okay? So two, three has no additive inverse. And therefore, the set S here is not, um, is not a vector space. Okay, hope, um, hope that helps, right? So you know how to show that something is not a vector space and how to show that something is a vector space. To show that something is a vector space, you have to go through all the axioms to conclude that it is a vector space, okay? So this will be, um, I will end this here. And then um, in the next video, we'll move on to prove a simple theorem under, uh, under vector spaces. All right, okay. Um,